the boho look and lifestyle is so perfect for when you have kids and a big family especially so guys this right here is just a little brass um container and this is for essential oils. I needed something for essential oils in our bedroom. And I have a lot of gold colors in our bedroom and teal. Those are the two main colors. And I have kind of a mid-century, intricate, very boho looking bed frame, dresser, and nightstands and furniture. And so I've got the whole boho thing going on in that room really well, I think. And this, this is a, just a little tin that I got or a, brass container i think it's genuine i'm guessing i've never looked it up but it's a whole c or something guys i got it for three bucks i think one one of my criteria when i'm out shopping i it's taken me a long time by the way to create the boho look i i was researching that apparently when you're creating a real authentic boho look it does take a while because you know you find pieces only pieces you love and um, only pieces that really speak to you. You don't just go out and, you know, go to a chain store and just buy stuff because it's boho. You, you actually want to get things that mean something to you and that you have a use and a purpose for. And so um, that's been one of my criteria. It's got to have a purpose. It's got to have a use. Sometimes I'll break that rule, but not very often because I do have a lot of kids and I don't want a lot of stuff to dust around. Um, so those are some of the criteria. Budgeting. Okay. So that's the other thing that I've I've kind of put as a limit for myself. I try very hard not to spend more than 20 bucks a month on creating the boho style. So that's another reason it's taken me a really long time because we are on a budget. We have six kids. We homeschool. We pay for our kids' curriculum, and we are on a single income. So, um, you know, I don't have a lot of money to just go out and spend to create the look that I want fast. So it's been about a, a $20 a month budget, but most months I, I don't even come close to that because there's months I don't go get anything at all. And I will say the $20 is my limit, but normally... I don't spend over, or I haven't spent over $15 a month on creating this look. So that is super exciting to me. I know some people are all about, you know, spending the most on stuff, but that's totally not me. And if you're one of those people, this is probably not the best blog for you to follow, unless you want to be one of those people. <laughs> then you can get lots of ideas uh, because I'm full of them. But anyways, I'm going to move on here. More essential oil containers. This, I, I saw this and I was like, oh my gosh. I have to have this. This thing is so perfect for essential oils. In fact, you can see I have some in here and it is perfect. I need an essential oil container by my sink, but I don't want to be looking at the essential oil bottles. I mean, yeah, they're, they're neat, but I just, I don't want to be looking at them and I don't want them on display. I would much rather look at this. So that's what this is. Another essential oil container. Again, three bucks super affordable and speaking of essential oil containers I'll show you the last essential oil container I have I have I have a huge box that I have upstairs I think it holds 70 oils but it's full and I needed more boxes for my essential oils because um, that's you know part of what I do I have my master's in herbology and I've been using essential oils since the 90s and studying them since the 90s. So if you guys have essential oil questions, by the way, I do have a class to teach you guys how to use them safely because that's very important. Um, and also how to pick a good essential oil company. Anyways, enough of that. This is one of my other essential oil containers here. And I just, it's a little treasure chest. Is that not boho? Oh my gosh. So it, it, it's messy, but um, it holds, I don't know, I want to say maybe 30 oils or more. And again, this was super affordable. I cannot remember the exact price on it, and it looks like I took it off. So um, I want to say it was around $4. So one of the things I wanted to do when I created my boho look was I wanted to be sure to incorporate anything that had kind of a, 
a historical vibe because history is a really big deal to me. I feel like if we won't truly have a very good idea of where we're headed if we don't know where we've been in, in the past. And I try to teach that to my kids in our homeschool. And we do spend a good chunk of time, at least an hour every day, studying history. One of our favorite things to do is um, we've been reading through a history book, but we also, or many history books, of course, but we, um, we also, every day over our lunch hour, we watch a documentary. And so we usually can find documentaries that have to do with whatever it is that we are studying in history. And we just, it's, it's one of our favorite parts of the days to watch documentaries and study history together. And so one of the things that I wanted to incorporate that had kind of a historical feel were metals. I wanted metals in my boho decor because metals take it, you know, like we, we just thought it was fascinating when we were studying how they would, you know, like hammer metal in ancient Sumer and Crete. And um, so that's, that's the story behind the metals and why I like to create metals. This was, again, very inexpensive. It's, it's prettier than, see, got the reflection there. But this is a, um, just a hammered brass plate. And again, I believe I got this for $4, maybe $4.50 because it is real. And what I like to do with this, I have not entirely decided how to use this yet. I always need like dishes like this and containers like this for the smaller children's items in our homeschool, like letters and uh, markers and things like that. But I actually, I don't know if I'm gonna use it for that. That is where I've been keeping this, but I think I might actually just use this as a plant tray. Um, I haven't decided yet, but I'm always needing plant trays. So I'm thinking I might use that as a plant tray. Um, this is a real copper bowl, and I got this for about three bucks. And we keep our erasers in it. I really, one of the things I love about having metal and copper. So if you, if you look at my pictures on the blog, you'll notice I have a lot of wooden bowls and a lot of metal. So one of the things I love about that is that I don't like to use a lot of plastics because it's not sustainable and plastic wears out. And of course, you know, we know how it ends up in oceans and landfills and takes forever to break down. So I like to use metals and I like to use wood because, you know, metals can be recycled and wood breaks down. So it's far more environmentally friendly, but I don't see myself getting rid of this recycling any of the metals anytime soon. Um, this is nice. One of the other nice things about having things in metal or wood is that it's not breakable. And of course, you know, when you got kids, they're always breaking stuff. So this is this is for our erasers. We always know where it is. Yeah, we need lots of erasers. It's just like pencils. So one of my <laughs> One of my tips, I help new homeschoolers get started. Um, that's one of my passions. For about three years now, I have had the joy and honor of helping new mamas get started homeschooling and help them figure out what curriculum and teaching style would be best for them. So if you ever have homeschooling questions, I would love to help you with them if I can. And I could probably help you at least get started and off on the right path for your family. Um, because I'm very studied in many different styles. With my oldest son being attention deficit, we had tried a lot of different curriculums and a lot of different styles and done a lot of research to find out how he was going to be able to best learn. So that's how I, I became familiar with so many different teaching styles and curriculums. So I just love sharing that with other moms that are trying to figure out what would be best for their family. Uh, anyways, two of, the, two of the things I always joke about and tell them though are, you can never have enough pencils or erasers. You want to get at least at least a thousand pencils and just have them stored away. I took us probably two years of homeschooling before I learned just 
get like a thousand pencils at the beginning of the school year because they're all going to be gone by the end of the school year. And then erasers was the other thing. There is nothing more irritating when you are in the middle of teaching a lesson or trying to explain something to a child and you don't have long because the baby's going to be up soon and you need to get this lesson done now. And now we need an eraser or a, another pencil, but you can't find one. So I learned my lesson and we now have like a thousand erasers and pencils on hand all the time. I just did a post about this. This is one of our favorite, favorite things. So you want to be sure to read the post that goes with this disco ball. We, my kids, we were at the Goodwill. This was $3.50 or $4.50. I can't remember which, but, and I have it on a really cool old necklace chain that my stepmother got me. That, speaking of my stepmom, I just got to tell you a little bit about my stepmom. I love my stepmom. She is awesome. And she, um, she is kind of what solidified the whole love of boho. I don't know if she'll ever let me, but I would love to go to her home and just photograph it someday and her and my dad in their home because they are like, when you, when you think of the boho lifestyle and the boho look, she is the queen of it in my opinion she's nailed it and she really i don't even think it ever dawned on her that it was a style it's just she was just being herself and so someday i hope she lets me share that look that she's created with you but she's the one who gave me this chain and i've always had it for a long time but anyways we were at goodwill and um my kids came running up to me one day you're gonna have to read the blog post that goes with it. it's way too long to share with you right now but they came running up in the middle of Goodwill, completely freaking out about this disco ball. Mom, mom, look, it's a disco ball. Now, to know why my kids thought it was a cool thing, you're just gonna have to read the blog post. It's called Three Ways, Three Cheery Ways to Decorate with a Disco Ball. And so go check that post out to hear the story and why it was so funny and why my kids, um, you know, are, <laughs> are born 2005 and later and love disco. So anyways, you just have to check that out. But anyways, of course I said, yeah, we are so getting that. I had actually been wanting a disco ball. So this is our disco ball and it is just, you guys, when the sun shines on it or when the moonlight shines on it at night, this thing just sparkles up the room. The baby goes berserk. He loves it. All the kids get excited about it. And so this is one of my very favorite pieces in the house. It's this disco ball. And of course, now you can guys can drop all of the jokes about disco and Bee Gees. All right, so we're going to move on here. And I'm going to show you guys what else I've got. Sorry about that break there. One of my kids was screaming at his Legos and I had to yell at him to tell him to stop screaming at his Legos. <laughs> hey, we're a big family, okay, give us a break. Anyways, this is my last trip. I, I don't know what it is about the teals and oranges lately, but I go through phases with colors. So I used to have a favorite color of red and I still love red. And I used to say it was my favorite color. But then, like growing up, I did not have a favorite color. Um, I only had the favorite color in my late 20s and early 30s. And the last few years, I just, I do not have a favorite color anymore. I had to be honest with myself. I don't have a favorite color. I love all the colors. If I had to pick, I would probably say a little black maybe is my favorite color. I know, dark, right? But it's not, you know, black is awesome. And anyways, I just, and it's grounding, and that's something I am always, <laughs> always drawn to, is things that are grounding. Anyways, I do love all the colors, though, and lately, I have been really drawn to teal. Uh, I like to have kind of a neutral backdrop, I guess, so that I can bring things in that have color and can switch things out to, I guess, just be the color of the year that I love. Um, cause it does, I change, you know, the colors I love change, but I just love this. And I really, really love the way that it looks with the metals, like the, the contrast. And so I found this basket. I've been looking for these Indian woven baskets. I don't think Indian is the right word. Actually, I think it's more of a native American. I think that would be the politically correct 
um, term for these baskets. But these are these are just like a Native American basket here, and I am crazy, crazy about them. I found this at the Goodwill, and it's so funny because I have been looking for a while for one, and I saw it, and I was like, oh, they finally have one, and it's used. So um, I love getting used, uh, and you know, cleaning it, of course, after I after I bring it home, which I, I don't think I actually cleaned this. But anyways, it looks clean enough. This this is my yarn bowl, and I use it for my yarn. I'm crocheting a, I like to crochet, and I'm crocheting new pillowcases. I don't, I mean, we really need new decorative pillows. The ones we have are very stained and very old, and they're all getting holes in them. So I am making, I'm crocheting um, pillow covers. So I was reading that part of creating the boho look is, you know, to bring in things with texture and to do lots of layers. So that's kind of what I'm doing with these. This one that I made, and I'm doing this one right here, and I'm going to get a, an alternative color for it, just to splash in some color upstairs. And then I, I found this, and this, these were my most recent. This was everything at the Goodwill that is in the house goods section is usually three dollars and fifty cents three dollars three dollars and fifty cents four dollars four dollars and fifty cents and very rarely will you find something that's above five dollars so most everything here was the three or the four dollar range and i can't remember on this but i think it was three dollars and fifty cents and it goes with the basket and it goes really well in my living room so i like to collect things like this for when i am um creating new plants so I like to get the clippings off of my plants and put them in something like this because it's dark. And I think I read somewhere that it's a good idea to when you're when you're starting new plants. Um, what's that word? Why can't I think of that word? And that front door of ours is still squeaking and it is driving me nuts. One of the kids just forgot to latch it or something. It's like, oh my gosh, I'm making a video and I can't even think because that door won't stop squeaking. It's driving me nuts. Oh my gosh, I'm stuttering now. What was I saying? Vase. Dark. Transplanting plant babies. Um, I forgot the word. What it's called. But I'm sure you guys know what I'm talking about. You know, I, I, I'm just going to be right back. I have to go latch my front door. I will be right back. Oh my gosh, you guys, I don't know if you could hear that squeaking, but it was like dominating my brain. Um, it was, I, I fixed it. We have like a windstorm going on outside right now. It's crazy. Anyway, where was I at? So I needed a container, two containers for the baby. I needed one for toys and I needed one for his diapers. So I used a cloth diaper. That was before we had six kids. I have not cloth diaper, which I'm very, very disappointed about. And I just, I have not been able to get started again with the sixth. I cloth diapered through all my other kids, all five of them. But this last one, we ended up moving when I was eight weeks postpartum with him. And the whole move darn near killed me. And it took me forever to recover from physically and mentally. So I just never got into cloth diapering with him. But I needed something for his diapers. And I really, really loved the snake charmer baskets, but I looked at the price and oh my gosh, they're so expensive. So I was at the Goodwill and look what I found. Oh my gosh. So when it's done, when I'm done using it for his diapers, I of course will put a plastic pot in this and use this for plants but I will always have my last baby's last diaper bin with me I will always have this unless of course one of the kids sits on it or something like that but we won't go there um anyways six kids people it's awesome it really is I wouldn't have it any other way speaking of kids this is the baby's toy bin. I wanted something that was not breakable, something that fit in with the decor. This was, I want to say this was $5. And the snake charmer basket is actually the most expensive thing for the house I have got at Goodwill. With the exception, I'm going to turn the camera just a little bit, with the exception of, if you can see it, the hutch. That's my herb and tea hutch over there and um so that hutch was 15 dollars 
That's the most expensive thing I think I've gotten at Goodwill for the house. But $15 for a hedge, come on, that's a killer deal. This was the other most expensive thing that I got at the Goodwill. It was, this was around $9. Still, when you can compare it with like a new one, $9 is a steal of a deal. So I didn't get these next two pieces at Goodwill. I got them at Walmart. You can also get them on Amazon. I wanted to show them to you really quick because they're metal and they kind of helped complete the metal um, that I was going for, the ham hammered gold and hammered copper colors. So one of the reasons, these are $6 and something at Walmart. So it is a little spendy. And so I only get like maybe one a month every so often. But the reason I get these and the reason I love these is because they're not breakable. And I've got six kids. Did I mention that? Yeah. And they break things all the time. But not these. I will have these forever. So it's actually more affordable when you think of the fact that you won't have to replace them because they're broken. <laughs> okay, let me think here. What else have I got? You can kind of see this table. It is so super super cute i love this style very simple very sleek just three legs isn't that cool um i got that for four dollars and fifty cents the reason i got it for so inexpensive is because one of the legs was broken but hey my husband's a woodworker and he fixed it and he did and it is way beefier underneath than it was before so guys, I think that's all of the Goodwill finds. Let me just look over my space here. Yep, pretty sure that's all the Goodwill finds that I have today to show you guys. Mm -hmm.